everyone, today we are going to learn a deep learning architecture which is called UNET model. UNET model is typically used for image segmentation. Here I'm going to talk about the UNET model that I implemented in my project. You can customize your UNET model and implement into your project. In my case, there are 13 boxes in my UNET model. Here we have box 1, box 2, and all the way to box 13. For the unit architecture, we are going to introduce it in three parts. The first part is downsampling part, and the second part is the bottleneck, and the third part is the upsampling part. Let's take a look at it separately. On the left hand side, we have B1 to Big 6. And in B1, this is our input image. Our input image size is 256 times 256. And there are three channels for the input image. And the three channels are red, green, and blue. So this is a RGB image. And then there are different arrows in different colors. The green arrow over here is a convolutional layer. And this convolutional layer has the kernel size of 3 times 3. And it will comes with a ReLU function, as an activation function. After passing it to the first convolutional layers, we are getting eight feature maps. And then we are passing it to the second convolutional layer then we get another 8 feature maps. We will take the 8 feature maps and pass it to a max pulling layer. The max pulling layer is represented with a red arrow. The kernel size for the max pulling layer is 2 times 2. The max pulling layer will extract the more important features from the previous feature maps. After passing it to the max pulling layer, the image size will become from 256 square to 128 square. We will take the feature maps and pass it to two 3 times 3 convolutional layers. Then we will get 16 feature maps at box 2. So we are basically doing the similar things from B1 to B6. And at box 7, we are taking the feature map from B6 and pass it to a max pooling layer. After passing the feature maps to max pooling layer, we will get image size of 4 times 4 and the number of filters is 256 in this case. And then we will pass it to two convolutional layers. Box 7 here, we call it bottleneck. And it has one max pooling layer and a up convolutional layer. After passing the visual maps to a up convolutional layer, we are getting 64 visual maps with the image size of 8 times 8. And the gray arrow here means copy and crop. We are copying the visual maps from B6 and crop it and then attach it to the visual maps at box 8. The copy and crop here is getting more features from the previous boxes and attach it to the current box. After the copy and crop, we are getting more features for the feature maps. So the input for the boxes has more features. And then we will take the input at box 8 and pass it to two convolutional layers. And then we will do up convolutional layers. At box 9, the image size is 16 times 16. And we also did copy and crop the visual maps from box 5 and concatenate it to B9. And then we will take the input and pass it to two convolutional layers, which is what like we did for box 8. We are doing a similar thing from box 8 to box 13. At box 13, we are concatenating the feature maps from B1 as well. And then we will pass it to two convolutional layers. The last layer for B13 is a 1 times 1 convolutional layer. 
Here we apply a sigmoid activation function. The sigmoid function will confine the pixel value in a range of 0 and 1. So the values on the last feature map will be confined in a range of 0 and 1, and you will actually look like a probability distribution on the feature map. And that's basically the unit architecture that we used for our model. Now we can move on to talk about the code. Here we define the unit model function. In the unit model function, the default input size is the input image with three channels. And the image size is 256 times 256. Here we assign the value of input to x and assign the value of x to inputs. In the unit architecture, there are downsampling part, bottleneck part, and upsampling part. First of all, we define the f, which is the number of filters equals to 8. And we created a list to store the outputs from each box. For the downsampling part, there are 6 boxes in our case. In each box, there are two convolutional layers with a kernel size of 3. It follows with the activation function ReLU function. After passing the input to two convolutional layers, we append x to layers, which is the list we created. And then we input the x to a max pooling layer. After that, we multiply f by 2. So in the next box, the number of filters will be multiplied by 2. Here we define another number of filters equals to 64. At the bottleneck, we define a variable equals to length layers minus 1. The length of the layers is 6 in our case. So j is 5 in our case. In the bottleneck, we also pass the inputs to two convolutional layers. And then we pass it to an upsampling layer with the number of filters equals to 64. And then we concatenate the outputs from x to the outputs in layers j. And in the upsampling part, there are five boxes. For the filters numbers, ff2 will be divided by 2 and f will be divided by 2 as well. We also pass the input to two convolutional layers and the upsampling layers. After that, we concatenate the feature maps in the current box to the previous box. In the last box, we pass the input to two convolutional layers. And the last layer is a convolutional layer with the kernel size of 1 times 1 with a sigmoid function as the activation function. Up to here, we finished designing the upsampling, bottleneck, and the downsampling part. And then we can create the model with the inputs and the outputs. Here, we choose Adam as our optimizer. And then we compile the model. Finally, we finished the definition for the unit model.